The colony forming unit is a foundational concept in bacteriology. Isolated colonies on a plate, like you can see here, are critical for all of the bacteriological analysis we do in identifying and characterizing organisms. But what exactly is a colony? What's a CFU? And how do we go from a microscopic organism to a population that we can see with our naked eye? If we look at this zoomed in picture of an E. coli culture growing on eosin methylene blue, we can see these bacterial colonies. And if we zoom in on them and then zoom in some more and zoom in some more, what you'll find is a homogenous population of organisms. Colonies on a plate are populations of bacteria. A colony is not an individual organism. So we need to remember that bacteria are tiny. And that colony is actually a clonal population. It descended from a single viable organism. And that ancestor organism, that progenitor organism, is defined as the colony forming unit. So how do we go from one colony forming unit, which is invisible, to a colony that we can actually see with our naked eye? Well, if we consider a single colony forming unit allowed to grow without any restrictions, doubling every 20 minutes, um, that population is going to grow quite rapidly. And after 24 hours, we're going to have an astronomical number of organisms that are certainly going to be visible to the naked eye. So if we look at this theoretical example here, we have a, a primary sample which contains a population of bacteria, and then we've plated this sample out on some agar, and you can see some bacterial colonies um, throughout our four streaks. An individual colony theoretically represents the presence of a single viable progenitor organism. So this gram-negative bacteria here, one individual organism, after it was plated, after that plate was incubated, developed into this entire colony. Because this population is clonal, each one of these colonies is a pure culture, um, which is really important because we need to work with pure cultures in the lab. It's critical that we're characterizing just one thing at a time. By understanding the concept of CFUs, we can also estimate the initial concentration of bacteria in our primary sample. So if we look at our broth suspension of bacteria, we can make dilutions of that. So a 1 in 10 dilution series, such that the number of bacteria in each dilution is lower and lower and lower. If we played out that dilution series onto agar plates, we can then see that we go from nearly confluent growth, lots and lots of organisms. And as we dilute the sample more and more, you can see that we eventually get isolated colonies. And at some point, we'll have colonies which are isolated enough that we can actually count them. So here on 10 to the negative 6, we have 14 colonies. So by doing some math, taking into consideration how much of our broth we plated onto this agar, and how diluted that broth was from the initial sample, we can back calculate to determine that there were 140 million CFUs per mil in our initial sample. I hope this description of CFUs was useful, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you.